rejecting the grace that's offered. God will pour out His judgment upon you on Judgment Day. I'm gonna try to love my the Bible says, I'm loving my enemies right now. I'm telling them the truth about Jesus Christ. I love you enough to warn you. Jesus Christ is going to judge each and every person. The Bible says we shall all give an account. You can party and revel now and look like a fool before men. But that day's coming when you will fall face down before a holy God and give an account as to why you have rejected him. To give an account as to why you chose sin rather than righteousness. That day is coming, my friend. The Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. You may, you may be deceived into thinking that all you have is this life. You may be deceived into thinking YOLO. But if you're walking by YOLO, know this, that you die twice. There is an eternal judgment. Can I ask you something? Yes, sir. How many people have you gotten to respond to your message? How many people have I led to the Lord? Yeah. I'm leading everybody here to the Lord right now. How do you know that? Are you going to choose him or not? See, I'm I've already chosen him. You have? Yes, sir. So when Jesus says, go and sin no more, what's your, life, what's your sin life like? I can't say that I, I never sin. So when he says, go and sin no more, and he says, he who sins of the devil, yet you say you follow him. That's just in 1 John, yeah. Um, so what about... King David makes some mistakes. I'm not, did, he has to repent, of did, course. Did he have his heart filled with the Holy Spirit? Was he given the power to live a godly life from the power of the cross? I believe, I believe No, so. he believed for Christ. Did no, I don't a lot of theologians agree that David was the only guy in the Old Testament that was endowed with some of the Holy Spirit. Well, okay, think of this. Uh, Noah, he would try to say he was a drunkard. How many times did he get drunk? Recorded in the Bible. I just once. Once, okay. Yeah. Now, what was his sin life like after that? I'm not sure. It doesn't record. He yeah. was the Bible says he was a righteous man. So yeah, it's not that true. you sin just a little bit, it's that you turn from your sin and that sure. you were getting now the New Testament, the church is given the power to live a life free from Holiness. sin. Yeah. 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 But isn't it true that we all stumble in many ways or Yeah, and I would say that there's sins leading on to death and sins not on to death. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Bible talks about that. Yeah. Um but what we're here to do today is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you don't have to remain in sin. And the reason I'm preaching that is because I know it to be true. I was a heroin addict. I was the worst of sinners. I was a thief. I was a liar. I was a whoremonger. I mistreated women. When I met Jesus Christ, he gave me the power over that sin. Now he compels me to warn men who, in this day and age, the Bible says there are many falling away from the church and also that there are scoffers and mockers. All right, So we can fully expect that the majority of these people, because the Bible says there are many on the broad way to destruction. So the majority of people aren't going to receive this message. In fact, the Bible says it's, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. We're fully expecting that preaching to all these people, the majority of them are going to consider us to be fools because okay. the natural yeah. man receiveth not the things of God. I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. What, my question is, is like, what about heal the sick, raise the dead, Certainly. cast out demons? Do you think I wouldn't, I wouldn't pray for people if... Uh, if, if someone came up and asked me for prayer, you think I wouldn't? No, that's what yeah. I'm saying is why don't you go ask them? Why don't, why don't we ask people, hey, man, you got any crazy thing going on with your body? That well, because primarily the Great Commission was to go and preach the gospel message, to, to make disciples. But Paul says to back it up with power, right? Certainly, and, and I believe when people respond, it is backed up with power. But it's not up to me to make people respond. I'm to compel them to come that our Father's house may be filled. But each and every man, you know, whether you're Calvinist or Arminian will be the view, each and every man has the, the they have have to choose for themselves whether they're going to continue in the path of unrighteousness in bondage to their sin or they're going to cry out to the one who frees from sin which is Jesus Christ and so what I'm to do is to convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine all right that's uh, if a person like you yeah you you want to you want to engage in the Word of God I'll talk to you and we'll engage and we'll communicate the best way we can but primarily what did the apostles and even Jesus Christ himself do with the gospel they preached it to large crowds publicly so that's why we're here today. Um, I'm, God didn't call me here today to lay hands on the sick. He came. He called me primarily to come and rebuke the KKK. But I also know that even on the other side of the fence, there are lost people who need to hear the gospel message of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to try to make the most of my time standing here, preaching and warning that there is a Christ and He's coming back to judge the earth in righteousness. The Bible says that. I'm not. I'm not trying to totally find fault with you. I actually have a friend who, who does street preaching. He drove all the way down to Virginia Beach and preached on the streets in Virginia Beach, slept in his car, and he yeah. doesn't. Not, he doesn't have the signs and stuff, but you know, he has a, a like an amplifier, yeah. so he does the whole thing. It's just in my experience, 
Um, I've, you know, I've, I've seen a little bit greater success praying for people who have sicknesses. But is that preaching the gospel? Uh, what? Well, some would say like that's it, showing the gospel. Yeah. yeah. And but we're it using. Opens the door to preach the gospel. Yeah, but you that's, can tell those that's people, re, hey, look, that's relational evangelism. But I, I don't see that in the Bible. What I see is when the gospel is proclaimed, it's proclaimed. A uh, man of God called. The Bible says, "Holy men of God spake." They went to large crowds. Even Jesus Christ. Where did he go? He went in front of large crowds. Now he. Doesn't so Paul do? Thanks for letting me interrupt you. Doesn't Doesn't Paul do relational evangelism? Doesn't he? It, to a degree. Yeah. But that, does he do it every time? No. So who's to say that I'm not doing it? You know. Yeah. Whenever. And I do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. But right now, today, it, primarily, I'm street preaching. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to preach the gospel, open air, uh, to anyone who will listen. And you know, your your uh, initial question is, how many people? You know, basically, how many people do you think you will reach with this method? Well, how many people did Jesus reach? Because all the ones that sat and listened to him, and people say, oh, he's reaching them. Guess what they did? They turned on him when he started testifying that their deeds were evil. So, okay, I'm, I'm tracking with you here. It, we can't live by the dictums of people's feelings, That's right. especially people's feelings who don't know the Lord. Yeah. I get that. But God to a sense, I, I, I feel like we can, we can, just through some demonstration of emotional intelligence, yeah. we can understand. Sometimes, dude, I don't know, I'm just thinking maybe signs and megaphones make people feel a little, eh, like, freaked out. Yeah. Whereas if you approach people and say, hey, man, I know I sound crazy, but I love Jesus. I believe he can heal any physical ailments in your body. And I believe that, or maybe you can, or you, maybe you just tell them, like, hey, I just want to pray for any relational struggles you're having with your family. And I believe, I'm trusting God to, to maybe bring some breakthrough and clarity. And I feel like it's more effective. Yeah, but does Isn't the kindness of God that leads men to repentance? Well, see, and that's all. Than a, a verse that people use, and the kind that verse. I've been struggling with that a lot. It's the, yeah, it's the kindness of God. It's the goodness of God which leads to repentance. What that's saying isn't that it's God being so good to people that they repent, because God's good to everybody here. Are they repenting? What that verse is saying is God is so good that He allows you to repent. He He could strike us down at any moment. Uh, what, the moment we sin, He could justly strike us down, condemn us to hell. But He extends mercy to us and gives us time to repent until obviously that big door of grace shuts and He calls you before His throne. It's the kindness of God that. Yeah. Sometimes kindness doesn't work. Right? Yeah. And, and the Bible also, and the Bible tells us that you know it's it's uh, you can win souls both with compassion and there's people that are led to be very compassionate and uh, maybe I'm not as compassionate as some, but I, I assure you that any opportunity I get to be compassionate to people, I'm going to be. But I also rebuke sharply when I see sin. So it says you win some with compassion and some with fear. All right. Do, do we rebuke? I thought we were supposed to rebuke people in the church. Well, there's rebuke in the church, but we are supposed to rebuke sin anywhere we see it. Um, think of Jesus. It says that he cried out, "Whoa!" I'm not disagreeing with yeah. you, but which, which we're, we judge in the church. Okay? Yeah, which, which to rebuke sin? Yeah. Okay, think of Jesus. He cried out, uh, Matthew 11. I'm not. I'm not Jesus, though. You know, I. You know. But you are called to judge, though. Yeah, but I feel like I'm called to judge those who are in the church. I like no, that no. He says a, ju a righteous man judges all things, yet is rightly judged by no one. You yeah. you have within you uh, what the, First, First Corinthians the Word of God tells you uh, what's righteous and what's not. You can determine how to judge and by the Word of God. Now, if we use any other standard, it's unrighteous judgment. If we use by what we think or what we feel or we're emotionally led in our judgment, we just say, hey, uh, that's wrong or that's right, and it's only our judgment. It's a conviction of our own. It's not found in the Word of God. That's an unrighteous judgment. All right. So it's clear to me, like, you know the scripture, and you're not a crazy, crazy heretic, heretic heretical Christian. Your, your means are different than mine. But how about, how about, like, the wisdom of Solomon? He says stuff like, sweetness of speech yeah. increases persuasiveness. Gracious words are a honeycomb. Isn't it possible? And I'm not talking Isaiah about said, lying lift, people. lift up your voice. Yeah. Uh, lift up your voice as a trumpet. Cry yeah. aloud. Spare not. Let my people know their transgressions. Yeah. So, you know, obviously when God calls a man to street preach, and I'm, I'm not saying that what you're saying is wrong, but I'm saying that there are points in times, there's a time and a season for everything. Uh, and that's why, you know, I street preach, but I also, you know, I'll take care of the homeless when I can. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll feed, clothe. Uh, I, I have prison ministry. I visit people in prison. I'm not That's just awesome. do. I'm not doing a one-fold ministry, ministry. But this ministry is a tough ministry. You know why? Yeah. One, it's not well received by the church. People think you weren't doing it, or you're unchristlike for doing it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how often you take them to the scripture to show that even Jesus did this when he pronounced woes over whole cities and talked about how judgment would be better for Sodom and Gomorrah than yeah. for them. Uh, we see the apostle Paul in front of the Athens, and he calls them ignorant and religious, and he's uh, preaching to them open air. And so we see this over and over in scripture and it was the primary source of preaching people weren't standing behind pulpits and winning souls 
So what we see in the Bible is, you know, street preachers, people going out to preach the gospel. Now it's not, this isn't something that's found in the modern church because Christians have become lazy and they, they want to be identified with the world. They don't want the world to think they're weird. They don't want the world to think they're throwed off or crazy. So they really want to blend in with the world. But the Bible says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. Uh, um, and I'm trying to think in the, the, I think it's Romans where he says, be not conformed to the ways of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we're not, listen, we're supposed to look and we're supposed to be contrary to the world. That's true. But does the church look like that today? I mean, they have rock concerts right in the, right in the sanctuary. Not. <laughs> most likely when you go to most churches and, you know, barring a few small, but largely the mega churches are, you know, think of the Joe Olsteins who do not even preach the Bible. They mentioned they sprinkle a little Jesus on the on their uh their self-help speech yeah we got it we have a lot of jesus came with grace and truth it seems like a lot of the church has hyper grace and half yeah half truth and i agree with you I, you know i I'm, I'm studying at regent university right now to maybe one day become a minister not maybe but like i feel yeah. like that's what God's you feel that's your call in life yeah and one my main message is I, I, can't, I can't i don't agree with you on necessarily the way my it's funny my friend who does the street preaching that was, his name's cello yeah. funny name He's from Charlottesville. Uh, he does a street preaching too. He has a similar take on First John, where he's like, "Dude, we should just never sin." And I agree, we shouldn't ever sin, and we are free to never sin. That's right. Yeah, and that's that's the holiness. discussion. However, I I I don't I'm not into arguing probability with you. All I can say is like I stumble. Well, I, I think. I well, I think that the the what it comes down to is the definition or the types of sin there is. Yeah. Sins on to death and sins not on like to death. Like iniquity and transgression. If we read First uh, Corinthians chapter six, verses nine through thirteen, and it gives a list of all kind of unrighteous righteousness that will not hurt the kingdom of God. Then we see Galatians, uh, I think five or six, it gives another list. Um, Ephesians has another one, such and such, uh, the, or, and the children of disobedience. Uh, these are those who are, it says something to the effect of, uh, and those who do such things, uh, the wrath of God comes upon them, such as the children of disobedience, right? Yeah. So Revelation says these were cast into the lake of fire. So it's, it's showing sins that were uh, sins that where people who commit such things are not right with God. Yeah. And then there's the sin, say you and I are having a discussion and we get angry in, spont in spontaneity. We don't plan to do it. It's not, we're not, you know, it's just something. It's a reactionary. A reactionary sin. So is that a sin unto death? No, we repent of it immediately. We know it was wrong, so on and so forth. It's not something that's damning us to You're hell. You're talking about sins that you don't have agony on. Yeah. And you, you allow. Your life is given to them. If, yeah, yeah, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're a drunkard. You don't it, have ag a, a sufficient agony of it sin because if God what's it like what's it take to get drunk okay if you're sitting in your chair at home for me not much well um, if you're sitting in your chair at home you have to okay you get the thought you entertain the thought you, you fall into the temptation now you got to make plans now with those plans you got to put them into action the whole time if you're a Christian God's going to because the Bible says that you know he's within us and he, he's the one who leads us not into temptation not into temptation but not into temptation he leads us on paths of righteousness so he's convicting our hearts telling us nope trying to convince us not but the moment we we go to apply our lives to getting drunk. We are telling God, you know what? I, I, I resist you, God. When we stop hating it, really, I think that's the key thing. When we well, don't I, agonize over us. I think if we could do it, we're not saved. I think if, it, yeah. if if we give our life to whoremongering, if we go to fornication, those are evidences of we're walking in darkness. The Bible says this is why uh, Jesus Christ was manifested to display who were the children of God and children of the devil. Yeah. If we say we know him yet walk in darkness, we are a liar. That's what the Bible says. What's your name again, man? Sam Jordan. Yeah, Sam Jordan. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I don't use the same methods as you, but it's clear to me you know the scripture. You're not a crazy here. You're not a heretic. You love, you love God. So I'm just my prayer for you is that you continue to increase in it and you know, a select, maybe a select gift of the Spirit. You use that as well. But you know what? You're you're free to preach, and you're right. God does use truth. Thank preachers. you. My, one of my good friends is. So I, I bless you, and um, yeah, I'll pray for you. Man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your prayers. Yeah, man. Good luck. Have a good one. You too. So today, as we stand in this park, and you believe the worst thing would be for the KKK to have their way. But I tell you, there is something worse that can befall you. The judgment of God coming upon your life.